Let's look at the chapter 2.6 related rates test review, um, which also covers linear approximation and L'Hopital's rule. So number one, uh, a balloon is rising vertically above a level straight road at a constant rate of one foot per second. So we have the balloon that's rising. Uh, just when the balloon is 65 feet above ground, a bicycle moving at a constant rate of 17 feet per second passes under it. So the balloon is here when um, the bike passes under um, directly beneath the balloon. Okay. How fast is the distance between the bicycle and the balloon increasing three seconds later? So this is the thing that we have to be careful about is this three seconds later uh, because um, uh, Three seconds later uh, is the reason why we can create a triangle because if it is at the moment that this um, uh, the bicycle uh, passes under the balloon, we're not going to have a uh, uh, we're not going to have a right triangle to create. But because time passes, um, that gives time for uh, the balloon uh, the uh, the bicycle to have some length for that x, and um, and that y will, um, will continue to rise. Okay, so that's a, that's a big thing here that uh, makes this problem a little bit different in terms of the setup. Okay, but let's figure out what we do know. Uh, uh, we do know that the rate of the y uh, of the balloon is increasing at a constant rate of one foot per second. So we know dy dt is one foot per second. Um, we know that the bicycle is moving at 17 feet per second. And uh, we're looking uh, to see how fast is the distance between the bicycle and the balloon increasing? So we're trying to find dz dt and uh, have z representing the hypotenuse, x representing the horizontal um, uh, distance uh, for between the bicycle and the and the point where uh, where it passes, and then y is um, uh, the the balloon's path or the distance or um, the height of the balloon off the ground. All right, all right. So um, when t is 0, y is 65 feet. But we're talking about this moment in time, this snapshot in time when it's 3 seconds later. So 3 seconds later, the balloon is, is sitting at, or well, it was sitting at 65 feet. But then 3 seconds later, it'll be rising at 1 foot per second. So that means 3 seconds is going to cover 3 feet. So 65 plus 3, we know that the y value at that particular moment in time will be 68 feet above ground. So that'll be the y value that we'll be using. Now for x, uh, the bicycle is moving at 17 feet per second. So after 3 seconds, it'll cover 17 times 3 feet, which is 51 feet. So that's the x value we want to use. So x is 51 feet, y is 68 feet. Uh, these values were not directly given to us, but we were given information um, to help us figure out um, where those exact x and y values are going to be. Okay, so we also need the z value. Uh, so uh, we can go through Pythagorean theorem. Uh, x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Solve for z, we get z equals 85 feet. Okay, so now it just becomes a problem that we've seen before with, with Pythagorean theorem, where we start with the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, we find the derivative of each variable with respect to time, and then we just plug in every uh, variable that we know. The only thing that's missing is dz dt. Notice that we don't have any rates that are negative because uh, over time x is going to be increasing right? and y is also going to be increasing. So if we think about this problem in motion, we can kind of picture um, how the length of, of this triangle is changing over time. So increasing, increasing, so that's why we have dx dt and dy dt being both positive values. Okay, number two, linear approximation problem. Uh, use linear approximation to estimate negative 1 over 15.7 times 4 through 15.7. So uh, first thing we do is we want to find that um, uh, find the, uh, the function that we'll be using. So we remove uh, the decimal value, the decimals in place of it, we put the x. So now we have negative 1 over x times 4 through of x. And we want to find next the order pair. So choose uh, the, the, the nearest integer value, which is 16. So plug 16 into the original function 
and 16 times 4 through to 16, 16 times 2 is 32. So we have our ordered pair 16 negative 1 over 32. Next step is to find the derivative so that we can find the slope. So to find the derivative, we need to set this up. Um, so 4 through to x, the same thing as x to the 1 fourth. Um, combine, uh, multiply um, uh, bases. When we multiply bases, we add exponents. When we do that, we get 1 plus 1 fourth, which is 5 fourths. And we set this up to, to uh, bring this up to the top to allow us to use power rule. We go through power rule, plug in 16 in for x, and we get 5 over 4 times 16 to the, um, to the 3 fourths. The 4 through to 16 is 2, 2 to the um, ninth, not 3 fourths, 9 fourths. 2 to the ninth is um, uh, times 2 squared. So 2 squared times 2 to the ninth, we add the exponents, we get 2 to the 11th, so that's our slope. We have our slope, we have our ordered pair, uh, plug into point slope equation, uh, but then we solve for y. And once we solve for y, then all we do is we replace the x value with just the decimal and use that to approximate, um, the, uh, uh, approximate uh, uh, what this value would be. Okay. And remember, when we replace the x value with 15.7, that's all we do. We don't, we don't replace it with this entire expression into the 15.7, okay, because we're just using uh, the linear equation to estimate that, um, uh, the function at this particular decimal. Okay, number three, find the limit. We're going to uh, see if we can <coughs> use L'Hopital's rule, if appropriate. So x approaching infinity. Here um, uh, uh, we can plug in a large infinity value, so we get positive infinity over negative infinity, which is indeterminate form, which allows us to find the derivative of numerator and denominator. So we get 8x minus 5 over negative 6x. If that's the case, if we plug in infinity again, we'll still get positive over negative infinity. So we find the derivative yet once again, and we get 8 over negative 6, and that reduces to be negative 4 over 3. Okay, part B, x approaching 1. If I plug all this into my expression, I'll get 0 over 0, which is indeterminate form. Uh, we could factor, but we're going to try and use L'Hopital's rule, which is derivatives. So we find the derivative of the numerator, find the derivative of the denominator, plug in 1, and we get 20 minus 8, which is 12 over negative 28. This is a constant. We reduce that, so our limit is negative 3 over 7. Okay. Okay, number four, we have a, uh, another, um, <coughs> another related rates problem dealing with, um, with volume of a cylinder. So water is leaking out of a cylinder container at a rate of 5 cubic centimeters per hour. The container has a diameter of 12 centimeters and a height of 16 centimeters. At what rate is the height changing when the container has height of 3 centimeters? So at what rate is the height changing? So we know we're looking for h, but rate of change of that, so dh dt, when the container has h of uh, height of 3 centimeters. So, and also we know that uh, water is leaking out at a rate of 5 cubic centimeters per hour. Cubic centimeters is a, um, uh, is a measurement for volume, and we have that per hour, so we know that's a rate. And water is leaking out, so we know that that container is losing uh, water. So the volume is decreasing, so we want a negative to represent that. So dvdt is negative 5 cubic centimeters per hour. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, container has a diameter of 12 centimeters. We don't use diameter, but we, we do use radius, so we're going to cut this by half. Um, uh, so 12 divided by 2 is 6, so we have our radius of 6 centimeters. Okay. So here we have a cylinder. Let me just draw this figure here. And let's say there is um, a certain amount of um, water um, in this container. Now, as the water level is increasing or decreasing, uh, obviously the height is going to be changing. But what about the radius? Right? The radius is remaining constant all the way throughout. This is not like a cone where the radius is changing uh, because of the, uh, the, the V-shape of the cone. But here, the radius, no matter where you are, it's always remaining constant. So what we can do is 
Here's our formula, v is equal to pi r squared h. But radius is going to remain constant, so I can replace r with 6 because for this problem, the radius is never going to change. So that will bring us just down to h, and there's no need for similar triangles. There's no need to uh, go through product rule. We're only down to one variable, so we can just find the derivative simply and plug in. So this reduces to be 36 pi h. Remember, pi is just a number, just a coefficient, not a variable. So v becomes dvdt, 36 pi is the coefficient that stays, h becomes dhdt. So now we have dvdt, which is negative 5. We're looking for dhdt, so we just divide the 36 pi over, and we get dhdt is equal to negative 5 over 36 pi centimeters per hour.